This month, we have a one-shot comic involving the more shady side of the Star Wars universe with the conclusion of the ongoing string of Jabba the Hutt one-shots. This story has writers and authors we covered before. It's from the same team who did the other Jabba comics, so you can see that review for their background. This story in a weird way, is flipping the strip from the script from the last few Jabba the Hutt stories. Jabba and Bib Fortuna have returned to Tatooine after the events of the last three one-shots, with Jabba having gotten a slew of treasure and is just ready to just kind of hang out and chill. However, it seems that Bib Fortuna has prepared a betrayal of his own against Jabba, having armed and coached a, group, a small group of slaves as part of a planned assassination attempt against his boss so he can steal Jabba's empire for himself. However, as the story goes on, we see that Fortuna has a second group of assassins who is tasked with killing Jabba as well, with explicit instructions that's clearly meant to be at cross-purposes for the first group. The two groups collide with each other, taking it themselves out, while Fortuna picks off a few members who could survive and tell too much, solidifying his place as the Hutt's trust, most trusted advisor. This installment probably provides more characterization to Bib Fortuna than he's received in any other work thus far. Fortuna plots out a pair of assassination attempts that he's designed to fail. Not because he wants his assassinations are intended to get Jabba killed. He wants him alive. Though through these failed assassination attempts, and by appearing to thwart them, he can solidify his place by Jabba's side. I do appreciate this installment actually has less gore and also less vor than the last two installments. Frankly, I'm glad the Jabba series is over. Jabba the Hutt is not an interesting character. There aren't any villains in Star Wars who can carry a story on their own. Just with us, how far we've gotten so with the series. Darth Vader with his backstory of hero-turned-villain who tries to find redemption through death by killing the Emperor and saving his son has a lot of narrative complexity to be discussed in terms of, like, hinting at what he's at, at the turn to come for the character. Boba Fett, due to the fringes of society he operates on, is more of an anti-hero than a straight villain. He's just as likely to be taking down a contract against a brutal murderer as much as a heroic smuggler like Han, and we'll get into that with his miniseries. Uh, even the Emperor has his machinations behind him. Behind him is We are interested in seeing how, like, how he seduces Vader to the dark side. Um, how he managed to claim power under seemingly so many people's noses. Jabba the Hutt, on the other hand, has none of the narrative breadth of those characters or even other fictional gangsters. He's not trying to go legit to find a safer, more stable career. He doesn't have a family he's trying to take care of or protect. He's just a villainous, greedy, though cunning, asshole. 
This doesn't make him an interesting lead character, but what it does make him is a good foil for other characters. Consequently, I am really quite glad that this is the last Jabba comic for a while, if not ever. Next time, we will get to see that more interesting take on Jabba with tales of J from Jabba's palace. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.